he is younger, and he has a three-inch advantage in reach. He's coming off a win as is Whitaker. So everything in favor of the fella from Fort Worth, Texas, by way of Kosovo, and that's Skender Halili. Starting to come in now as we get close to our main show. Skinder Halili turned pro in Texas in 2010 with a first round KO win over Nick Cadenia and then stopped his first six opponents. All right, here's Lupe Contreras to get this underway. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue with the action once again here at Center College Park Center. Once again, being brought to you by Bob Aram Top Rank Incorporated in association with La Cerveza Tecate Con Carácter and being broadcast worldwide on TopRank.com. This bout scheduled for a limit of eight rounds or less in the welterweight division. The judges are Mike Mitchell, Javier Alvarez, and Irwin Sparks. The man in charge, referee Robert Chapa. In the blue corner, he enters the ring wearing black with leopard print. He weighed in at an official 148 pounds. In nine bouts as a pro, he has eight victories against one lone defeat with two of his victories coming by way of KO. Fighting out of San Antonio, Texas, Benjamin the Black Sican Whitaker. In the red corner, he steps in wearing the red trunks with black trim. He weighed in at an official 148 and one quarter pounds. He enters the ring, an undefeated professional with eight victories. All eight victories coming by way of KO. Representing Fort Worth, Texas, Skender Halili. Well, Halili, originally from Kosovo, comes in here. Eight, no, eight KOs. His last fight was January of 2013, 2013, when he stopped Robert uh, Crespo in six in New York City. So he's just getting back to it. Robert Chapa, the third man in the ring. Ten-point must scoring system, no standing eight count. There's no three-knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved with the bell in any round, and only the referee can stop the fight. So we're set to go. Halili is decked out in the red trunks and the black trim. The other guy, Benjamin Whitaker from San Antonio, Texas, black and gray. So here we go. Round number one, scheduled for eight. Halili has only been as far as six rounds one time in his career. That was his last fight two years ago. Benjamin Whitaker refers to himself as Blacksican, taking the best from the styles of... African Americans and Mexican fighters. He turned pro in August of 2012 with a second round TKO over uh, Jermaine Carson in San Antonio, Texas. Then he had seven straight wins to begin his career. His only loss was to uh, Jadijus Kavaliuskas in uh, August of 2014 when he was stopped in the fifth round in a fight in Glendale, California. So. Kavaluskas is a pretty tough character. Yeah, he is. Kavaluskas is a good fighter, no question about it. And in that particular fight, uh, uh, Whitaker was cut early. And he said, you know, everything that probably could have happened to me bad in that fight happened to me in that. So he uh, feels like he's been through it now, and he'll be better for it in the future. By the way, Whitaker is 30 years of age, and Halili, who I've been anxious to see fight, just gets close to another Eastern European fighter. Well, Lily is a stand-up boxer. He uses a long left jab as kind of a range finder for his right. He does have a very big right hand. I've seen him knock guys out with it with one punch. That's his, that's his big shot. Not afraid to take some shots here by Whitaker coming in. 
much more of a battle here. Both of these guys are committed to winning here. Yeah, well, you know, you love the matchup on paper right away. A guy 8-1 and one against a guy 8-0. 16 wins, one loss. Yeah, I didn't think that really necessitated a warning. And, and neither did the fighters. There's that right hand that uh, Rich alluded to of Halili. He does a nice job slipping off that left shoulder and, and dropping the left hand with the right behind it. Yeah, he's got a nice style, Halili. And he will throw a left hook to the body that can be very effective for him as well. Meanwhile, I think what Whitaker has done more damage uh, to this point in the round. You see the redness around the face. And very close first round. Both guys doing some scoring. Both guys came to win. Nice combination by Whitaker. That was real good work by Benjamin. See what you mean about the jab of Halili. He's got a decent jab and let that right hand go behind it. And boy, that time he goes with the right hand lead then the left hook. Change things up just a bit. Seems like a very well matched fight, Colonel, in the opening round. That was a good round. Both guys had some uh, moments in there, and I'm anxious to see how this one evolves. Well, I am too. I'm going to give it to Whitaker because I thought that he, he landed more damaging blows, but. There's a case to go the other way as well. Joe Guzman. Paul Juarez. Andrea Halili. Anthony Montoya across the way. Reagan Martinez. We take a look at the action from the first round. They're very good work and a nice combination. In fact, that was seven or eight punches by Whitaker before he finally cut it off. And as you can see, both punches in that nice combination, the left and the right following it, both landed cleanly. Good work by Whitaker and his combinations. And part of the reason why I thought Whitaker just nosed him out in that first round. This is round number two. Red trunks is Halili. Black trunks is Whitaker. I'm the Colonel Bob Sheridan with Rich Murata. You'll hear from Christina Poncher in a little while. This is a scheduled eight round affair, welterweight division. And they're both in just slightly over that. Welterweight's at 147. They came in at 148 and a quarter and 148. Whitaker is a fine boxer, and he does it without movement. He likes to stand flat-footed. He throws a lot of jabs out of there, but he will kind of try to pick off your punches right in front of you. He puts his hands out in front of him, tries to parry those blows, and to counter off of them. Take a look at how he's got his hands there defensively. Nice job. Left took that time by Halili, and Halili felt uh, that one like you do when you hit a home run in your hands. You better believe it. it yeah, felt good. Yeah, I'll tell you, Whitaker felt it too. Whitaker to the left of your screen. That's Halili in the red trunks to the right. Making Whitaker miss a little bit more this time as the referee chapter stops them. Whitaker seemed and he got hit by that uh, good combination from Halili to have like almost a delayed reaction from it. He stood there in front of him and then said, you know, I think I'm going to back out of here. It's another very close round. The last round was close and this is a close round as well. You didn't see anything separating the two so far. Uh, not really. Very close. Very close. Not much to choose between the two. Fight very much up for grabs. In fact, just getting the edge and getting on top is very much up for grabs. Love that jab of Whitaker's. 
Uh, you know, the thing is, when you see him, he has his feet fairly close together. You see his heels, and then he steps up into his jab, so he gets nice power on it. So technically, his jab is nice. So he steps back and waits for his man to come in, and then he fires his jab. And that's why he has the power. In it. He does. He doesn't have the overall power that Halili has. I think the last two punch, the last two fights for Halili have been the only fights in his career that have gone past two rounds. All right, the bell ends at. You know, I'm going to put that down as 10-10 because I think the judges will be split on it. Remember, it's our job not to score the fight, but to give you an indication of how we think the judges may have it. So based on what I thought Whitaker winning the first round, I got him slightly out in front of the fight, but not a lot between these two guys to this point. Six more rounds to go. All right, the action's been good. It's been very brisk. Really enjoying it. There you see Halili with the overhand left. Whitaker deciding right then, I think I'm going to get out of here. But there you see Whitaker. Look at those clean punches. He has landed, I think, the cleaner shots actually right to the jaw. Although Lily may have had a little bit more of the power that shook up Whitaker in that last round. But two very good rounds, two close rounds, very competitive. And these two fighters are evenly matched, which is how you like it. All right, so we move to round three. Colonel with Rich, Christina, our principals, Skender Halili, decked out in the red with the black trim, blue shoes to the right of your screen. To the left of your screen now in the black. Black Sakan on the uh, trunks. The best of uh, African American and best of uh, black fighters. And that was the Mexican part of the uh, body shot. <laughs> Boy, he's got a lot to choose from. Nice counter there by Whitaker. Just. Aimed his right hand right over the left of Halili. Good job. Whitaker powering now with that jab. Now he lets fly with the left, which whistles past the nose of Halili. Halili set up right in front of him. Not a lot of movement right now. Jab, jab. Not getting a lot with that jab, though. He's trying to position himself to let go with the right hand. Nothing there yet. You know, I love to see uh, fighters like this matched up early in their career because it not only forces them to fight well, Colonel, but it forces them to think in there. They're really, and, and you take a look at their faces, they're really trying to figure out what they can do to outfox their opponent. Yeah, for you uh, fellas that fight in hockey fights or maybe street fights, this is totally different. These guys really, these guys are accomplished fighters, boxers. And, and as Rich said, they're, they're trying to figure each other out. It's not just a... Uh, you know, let it fly, punches from outside and trying to take somebody's teeth out. This is this is a tough boxing match for both guys because they're both at about the same skill level and they they both came to fight. I think Whitaker's a little bit more busy, even though uh, Lily keeps coming forward. They both look as though they have a good uh, foundation, good, well-schooled. Look as though they have uh, good futures and could turn into main event fighters. Remember, Whitaker is 30 years of age, but Halili is just 24. The undefeated guy with the eight KOs. And he's run into a very, very tough guy here. There's the left hand, right hand combination by Halili showing some hand speed and a little bit of power, snapping that head back. Got kind of a wry smile out of Whitaker as if to say, okay, yeah, you got me. movement there threes in the books rich i'm hard pressed in this one man this is a tough fight to score well you could have wildly divergent scores at the end of this one well that's what happens when you have a a, a fight where guys are uh, uh, you know one way or the other and they all seem to go the same way look at this that was the best uh, that was the best combination of the fight <laughs> 
and acknowledged by Whitaker. And a good, that's the counter right we referred to that the Whitaker threw during the course of the round. Nicely done. <laughs> look at that look on Whitaker's face after he took that one. Yeah, this is the type of fight where you could have it lopsided one way or the other, and you can't argue with them because these rounds are so close. You know, fighters said to me, gee, the judges rub me. I said, well, you know, all you have to do, because any of us can judge the easy 10-9 round. It's the close 10-9 round where the controversy comes. And I expect that's going to happen with Pacquiao uh, in the fight, uh, uh, you know, coming up. Yeah, because you'll have uh, Floyd. Certainly it wouldn't seem will throw as many punches as Pacquiao. Will he? By being more economical for the better punches. It's a fascinating equation to be sure. May 2nd. A very compelling fight. I can't I can't wait for it. And I think that's the case for this is the type of fight that has the attention of uh, well no real boxing fans are gonna be able to afford to get into that fight. <laughs> the high rollers to get all the seats. I mean at the prices. That is Whitaker. Trying to keep the pressure on Hillary. The first minute of the round is gone, and there's no difference between them there. Well, they're a little cautious in this round, and I think that's because they both ate some real hard leather in that last round. So they're showing some respect here in this round for each other. Whitaker's at his best, though, when he's pumping that jab out. See, the jab right now there, the reason why it's not effective here is because he had the legs separated that time, Rich, so he's just using it as a positioning tool, but he didn't throw the right hand behind it at all. So he's just using the left now as a position tool, but Halili is trying to get into position and maybe really land the jab. So he's not doing it right now either, but he goes with the right hand. They both have a tendency to use the jab the same way, trying to set up right hands. Most of the evening, though, I think Whitaker's jab has been superior. Yeah, because I, I like it. It's, it's a heavier jab, it seems like to me, than Halili's. And, and just as you said heavier, he snapped one right off his head and it snapped the Halili's head. But, you know, you can almost see the wheels turning in there as you look into the eyes of these fighters as they're right above us. It's a thinking man's fight. And remember, Halili, everybody he's fought, he's knocked out. Everybody. So he's, he's, he's in a situation, too, now, where he's got to overcome a situation where a guy's just not falling down when he hits him. Well, I get Whitaker slightly out in front in this fight. He gets tapped by Whitaker for a third time in this round. He smiles, which is usually a pretty good indication that he got hit. So Halili feeling some of the power now of uh, Benjamin uh, Whitaker. <laughs> Bell ends the fourth round. I don't know how accurate my scoring is, but I've got Whitaker ahead by two points, 40-38. <laughs> I tell you, you're a brave man if you try to if you try to score this. Well, one. it just as easy could be 40-38 <laughs> the other way, or more. It's that kind of fight, folks. You got to let your hands go. You want to win this fight? You got to go out there and you got to get it. These judges are not going to give you the damn fight. What are you waiting on? All right, the action's been brisk through the first four rounds. There you see a beautiful jab thrown by Halili to follow up right. But then again, a nice right hand by Whitaker, who's been able to land both a lead right and also the counter right in this fight. In that exchange, Rich, the reason I gave that round to Whitaker because I thought his punch landed heavier than Halili's did. Remember, Rich has reminded you a couple of times that uh, Skenda Halili is 8-0 uh, and o with eight KOs, the kid from Kosovo right there, that's it. is uh, in a very close fight now. Four rounds to go, and I've got uh, Whitaker slightly out in front of the fight, but that's uh, 
That's really uh, could be the other way. I mean, that's the way I'm seeing it. But these rounds are so close so far. No one's been down. Nobody really shaken. And both guys at different times. This is a hard right hand off the right hand of Whitaker. Yeah, and I think Whitaker's getting bolder here. Now he is. He's turned it up a notch. He's in better position right now when he's on the inside. Then he steps back, gives him some room to skip forward. At some stage here, Halili has got to turn this into a war because it's just too close. Every round is too close. And he's behind in this round, in my opinion. But there's plenty of time to go over two minutes and 14, 13 seconds of this round. And remember, when the judges score rounds, they don't score like, well, he won the first minute, and the other guy won the second minute, and whoever wins the third minute. That is the way it goes. It's the accumulation of punches, sharp, crisp punches, effective aggressiveness, and the guy who's been damaged more. And at this point in this round, Halili has been damaged more. He's been hit with harder punches. But to this point, Rich, this is one of the easier rounds for me to score. Yeah, I would say my overall impression, and this is not a round-by-round round score, at the end of four rounds, was this is an even fight. Yeah. These are two guys on, uh, boxing on even terms. But in this round, Whitaker appears to be getting on top a little bit. Well, he doesn't want to reach like that. Just like that, he'd be open now. That's a, that's a very strong right hand that Halili can launch. There's a counter, and uh, Whitaker was fortunate he didn't come back with it. Well, Halili better start uh, launching a few of them now because I agree with you. I think Whitaker made a statement in this round, and this is a, a through two minutes anyway, the best round uh, to score for Whitaker in the fight. First round, very close, so with two and three. Four I gave to Whitaker, but it could just as easily have been gone the other way. Not much effective offense for Lily in this round. See, and that's the uh, that's the quandary right now, and the conundrum facing Halili at this point. He's in there with a fighter who's not falling down when he hits him, as all his other opponents have. So. But what's got to be going through his mind at this point and what they've got to figure out in his corner how does he do enough to win a round win the rounds from here on because he's got a fighter who doesn't look like he's just going to fall down this is Whitaker landing more he only has tried to turn it up a notch but not enough that to me is the only really clear round of the fight like you said your sense is after four was dead even even though I have Whitaker slightly out in front because I know the judges won't score 10, 10 rounds. But, uh, go get him. Go that's the first go. really definitive right round of the fight. You can't just wait. Don't wait on him. Go get him. Go get him. You can hurt this guy. You've been hurting him. But you're not. I can tell you. Well, there's three rounds to go. I have Whitaker up 50-47. What's this, uh, Rich, this Whitaker shot here? All right, let's take a look at it. Whitaker, that long right hand, as we mentioned uh, last round, he's been able to land it uh, both in uh, counter situations and with the lead, and he cut off the exchange there as well with a nice little left hook. See if Halili can have a bounce back round now. Well, Whitaker in his last fight in January this year had an eight-round unanimous decision win over Rodolfo Gomez Jr. in Laredo, Texas, and that was for the... Uh, USNBC 156 pound title. So he's down at 148 for this one. So he may be the bigger man, and maybe that's why his punches are taking more of a toll on Halili. Here we go. Halili certainly needs a breakout round, as Rich said. Those counters are coming in to play more for Whitaker. Whitaker started in the last round, turning it up a notch, and he appears to be back in that same groove here. Really trying to jab and cut loose with the right hand, but he doesn't let the right hand go. He needs to let a lot more right hands go. He's going to beat this guy. Left hook by Hillary. Whitaker's fighting a very smart fight. 
and he is absolute proof that you can just stand right in the pocket and be an excellent boxer and just box. You don't have to dance. You don't have to move a lot. You don't have to run. And that's what happens too, you know, when we were mentioning uh, Mayweather and Pacquiao. Many people misinterpret Mayweather's style in my mind. I mean, Mayweather will stand right in the pocket in front of you and make you miss. Well, he has that ability to roll that shoulder. But what you've got to do, basically, is what we've talked about on a couple of times tonight, is you're going to step uh, to his, off his left shoulder to your right, so you open that shoulder up, and then throw your left down the, uh, the center to try and catch him. And don't forget, that's Pacquiao's power hand. I mean, that's the way Manny's going to have to try and fight this guy, is get him out of curling that left shoulder in. Oh, get him to open it up. Of course, his hands are so quick. And this is what's interesting in this fight. Has he lost even the half a step that made him the greatest defensive fighter I think that I've ever seen? Has he? I don't know. And of course, Floyd has a magnificent counter right that he'll be looking to absolutely to utilize against the Pacquiao. And that's how you beat a southpaw. So many variables in that fight. Man, I can't wait. <laughs> he needed. Solid right hand landed by Whitaker again. Malili's big shots are coming fewer and more far between. Oh, he had an opportunity to throw his right right there and he didn't he let it go. Just hasn't let it go, Rich. Let's go that time into a windmills twice. Well, I gotta go with Whitaker in that round. I get this fight that, you know, could be dead even 60-56 right now going to the last two rounds. Favor Whitaker. Seventh round coming up. Benjamin Whitaker's done a real good job tonight with right hands. This one he came in behind his left, forced Halili to give ground. And he landed another one right after that as soon as Halili tried to reestablish his own jab again. But I haven't seen Halili land anything like that that has changed the pace. You know, when you, when you, when you uh, talk about scoring punches in effective aggressiveness, you talk about taking the other guy where he has to go back and reset after you hit him. And in both of those cases, those were effective right-hand punches because he had to go back and reset. It took him out of his pace. And that's why I gave him both of those rounds, uh, five and six. Here we go in the seventh round. I see an urgency by Lily right now. He's got the power to turn on the urgency and make something dramatic happen. He's trying to, th he's trying to throw more, first of all, Halili. He's trying to come at him faster. And trying to throw his jab to a gr better effect in this round instead of just a range finder. Well, it, 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 all of those things you said are true. It, it, and it is better. Now he pushes him off, tries to land the right hand, and he's got to load up some right hands and try and catch this guy. Yeah, but I'm getting the feeling, you know, you asked for a sense of urgency, and I think Halili's come out with it in this round. Whitaker doesn't make it easy for him, though. <laughs> nice left hook, and Whitaker right back with a grazing left hook, and it bounced off the cheek. Solid right hand, left hand, Hillary lands a body shot. A Lily with his back to you in the red, coming at you now to the right of your screen in the black front, says Whitaker. I get Whitaker unofficially slightly out in front. Still could be pretty close to even. When you're coming into this fight, I thought Halili would be the guy who landed more of the right hands, and it's been just the opposite. Whitaker has done a real nice job with his right tonight. For some reason, Halili has been just not throwing enough right hands. I wonder if he has some sort of injury or something to his right hand. 
very occasionally will he let that right hand go. Meanwhile, the, see the Whitaker jabs. Yeah, he's not letting the right hand go at all. I, I, I'm just wondering if he hurt his hand at some stage. It's possible because he's used the left jab almost exclusively in this round. I mean, there he had him position to let the right hand go. Fifteen seconds to go in the seventh round. Nice right hand. That's the right lead we've been talking about. That to me is a Whitaker round. I've given Whitaker de definitively five, six, and seven, whatever about the first four rounds of the fight. I'm going to 70, 65, and, uh, you know, in favor of Whitaker. I expect it's going to be closer than that. All right, let's take a look. Halili came out strong in this round. Was throwing that left jab out. As you can see, knocked the head back of Whitaker, and that was in the first minute of the round. He did a nice job, but he didn't do much more than jabbing in that round. Anthony Montoya, I'm sure, had something to say to him, and Joe Guzman. Uh, let's see what happens here in the eighth and final round of this cruiserweight fight, uh, welterweight fight, rather, that has been interesting, to say the least. Very, very close for the first half of the fight, then I thought Whitaker landed heavier and more definitive blows in uh, five, six, and seven. And There's a right hand. And another one. Wow. He's definitely got Whitaker's attention, and the crowds, too. So if he was saving it, he's unleashed it twice in this round. Well, he's got to unleash it a lot more. As Whitaker, right hand, then left hook. Right hand again, another right hand, and another right hand. Three right hands in a row. They're both juiced up now. And Whitaker's going, hey, let's fight. That's five right hands that Whitaker's landed. And, and those are the right hands that Halili needs to be throwing. There's a clear increase in confidence, it seemed like, from Benjamin Whitaker with each succeeding round. He's landing jabs. He's got Halili reaching with his right hand. Not landing any real heavy right hands in the fight. He's landed a couple of decent left hands. Decent jabs and left hooks. It's amazing when they... When the pace picked up, the crowd really got into it. Whitaker, only nine professional fights. I think it's going to be interesting to see the two exchange words there coming out of that clinch. But whether he gets the decision or not here, I think they need to fast track him and see if they can make something happen for him in his career because he is 30. He's only a month away from being 31. Less than a minute to go in this fight now. <laughs> Lily may be in danger not only of losing the fight, but uh, it's certainly his KO streak is done. Unless something really dramatic happens in the last 30 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> that still doesn't give him the round. 
It was a good fight. I thought both fighters enjoyed the combat. I scored it. You're going to be surprised. 80 to 74. With all the close rounds we had, but uh, it could be a lot uh, closer. All right, we'll take, here. Yeah, let's take a look at the Whitaker just said, okay, let's go. Fine, come on, let's punch it out. And he came back with some good stuff of his own. This was a stage where I think he had five in a row, Rich. This is the third one. He was calling out a Lily at that point. I thought it was a real good fight, a real interesting fight. Good matchup of Wills. So Whitaker, uh, according to my sheet, should get the unanimous decision victory here. Uh, again, I scored an 80-74. I'll be real interested to see how the judges have it. Rich. Well, I thought Whitaker won the fight. I thought he had the certainly had the advantage in the second half of the fight. I like what he did, and I th think both fighters can pick it up from here and have a future. All right, we're ready to get the official particulars of this one. Here's Lupe Contreras. Lupe. Ladies and gentlemen, after completing eight rounds, the official scorecard reads as follows. Judge Mitchell. And on another right hand. Three right hands in a row. They're both juiced up now. And Whitaker's going, hey, let's fight. That's five right hands that Whitaker's landed. And, and those are the right hands that Halili needs to be throwing. There's a clear increase in confidence, it seemed like, from Benjamin Whitaker with each succeeding round. He's landing jabs. He's got Halili reaching with his right hand, not landing any real heavy right hands in the fight. He's landed a couple of decent left hands, decent jabs and left hooks. Amazing when the when the pace picked up, the crowd really got into it. Whitaker only nine professional fights. I think it's going to be interesting to see the two exchange words there coming out of that clinch. But whether he gets the decision or not here, I think they need to fast track him and see if they can make something happen for him in his career because he is 30 he's only a month away from being 31 less than a minute to go in this fight now in their career because it not only forces them to fight well colonel but it forces them to think in there they're really, and you take a look at their faces, they're really trying to figure out what they can do to outfox their opponent. Yeah, for you uh, fellas that fight in hockey fights or maybe street fights, this is totally different. These guys really, these guys are accomplished fighters, boxers. And, and as Rich said, they're, they're trying to figure each other out. It's not just, uh, you know, let it fly punches from outside. And, Trying to take some of these teeth out. This is this is a tough boxing match for both guys because they're both at about the same skill level, and they they both came to fight. I think Whitaker's a little bit more busy, even though uh, Lily keeps coming forward. They both look as though they have a good uh, foundation, good well schooled. Look as though they have uh, good futures and could turn into main event fighters. Remember, Whitaker is 30 years of age, but Halili is just 24, the undefeated guy with the eight KOs. And he's run into a very, very tough guy here. There's the left hand, right hand combination by Halili, showing some hand speed and a little bit of power, snapping that head back. Got kind of a wry smile out of Whitaker, as if to say, okay, yeah, you got me. I think that really. Necessitated a warning. And, and, and neither did the fighters. There's that right hand that uh, Rich alluded to of Halili. He does a nice job slipping off that left shoulder and, and dropping the left hand with the right behind it. Yeah, he's got a nice style, Halili. And he will throw a left hook to the body that can be very effective for him as well. 
Meanwhile, I think what Whitaker has done more damage uh, to this point in the round. You see the redness around the face. And very close first round. Both guys doing some scoring. Both guys came to win. Nice combination by Whitaker. That was real good work by Benjamin. See what you mean about the jab of Halili. He's got a decent jab and let that right hand go behind it. And boy, that time he goes with the right hand lead, then the left hook. Change things up just a bit. This seems like a very well matched fight, Colonel, in the opening round. That was a good round. Both guys had some uh, moments in there, and I'm anxious to see how this one evolves. Well, I am too. I'm going to give it to Whitaker because I thought that he, he landed more damaging blows, but there's a case to go the other way as well. He likes to stand flat-footed. He throws a lot of jabs out of there, but he will kind of try to pick off your punches right in front of you. He puts his hands out in front of him, tries to parry those blows, and to counter off of them. Take a look at how he's got his hands there defensively. Nice job. Nice left took that time by Halili. And Halili felt uh, that one like you do when you hit a home run in your hands. You better believe it. it yeah. felt good. Yeah. I'll tell you, Whitaker felt it too. Whitaker to the left of your screen. That's Helily in the red trunks to the right. Making Whitaker miss a little bit more this time as the referee Chapa stops them. Whitaker seemed and he got hit by that uh, good combination from Halili to have like almost a delayed reaction from it. He stood there in front of him and then said, you know, I think I'm going to back out of here. Another very close round. The last round was close, and this is a close round as well. You didn't see anything separating the two so far? Uh, not really. Very close. Very close. Not much to choose between the two. Fight very much up for grabs. Uh, that's really uh, could be the other way. I mean, that's the way I'm seeing it. But these rounds are so close so far. No one's been down. Nobody really shaken. And both guys at different times. This is a hard right hand off the right hand of Whitaker. Yeah, and I think Whitaker's getting bolder here. Now he is. He's turned it up a notch. He's in better position right now when he's on the inside. Then he steps back, gives him some room to skip forward. At some stage here, Halili has got to turn this into a war because it's just too close. Every round is too close. And he's behind in this round, in my opinion. But there's plenty of time to go over two minutes and 14, 13 seconds of this round. And remember, when the judges score rounds, they don't score like, well, he won the first minute, and the other guy won the second minute, and whoever wins the third minute. That is the way it goes. It's the accumulation of punches, sharp, crisp punches, effective aggressiveness, and the guy who's been damaged more. And at this point in this round, Halili has been damaged more. He's been hit with harder punches. But to this point, Rich, this is one of the easier rounds for me to score. Yeah, I would say my overall impression, and this is not a round-by-round round score, at the end of four rounds was this is an even fight. Yeah. These are two guys on, uh, boxing on even terms. But in this round, Whitaker... Most of the evening, though, I think Whitaker's jab has been superior. Yeah, because I, I like it. It's, it's a heavier jab, it seems like to me, than Halili's. And, and just as you said heavier, he snapped one right off his head and it snapped the Halili's head. But, you know, you can almost see the wheels turning in there as you look into the eyes of these fighters as they're right above us. It's a thinking man's fight. And remember, Halili, everybody he's fought, he's knocked out. Everybody. So he's, he's, he's in a situation, too, now, where he's got to overcome a situation where a guy's just not falling down when he hits him. Well, I get Whitaker slightly out in front in this fight. He gets tapped by Whitaker. 
for a third time in this round. He smiles, which is usually a pretty good indication that he got hit. So Hurley feeling some of the power now of uh, Benjamin uh, Whitaker. Bell ends the fourth round. Whitaker's going, hey, let's fight. That's five right hands that Whitaker's landed. And, and those are the right hands that Halili needs to be throwing. There's a clear increase in confidence, it seemed like, from Benjamin Whitaker with each succeeding round. He's landing jabs. He's got Halili reaching with his right hand, not landing any real heavy right hands in the fight. He's landed a couple of decent left hands, decent jabs and left hooks. It's amazing when they when the pace picked up, the crowd really got into it. Whitaker only nine professional fights. I think it's going to be interesting to see the two exchange words there coming out of that clinch, but whether he gets the decision or not here, I think they need to fast track him and see if they can make something happen for him in his career because he is 30. He's only a month away from being 31. Less than a minute to go in this fight now. Whitaker powering now with that jab. Now he lets fly with the left, which whistles past the nose of Halili. Halili set up right in front of him. Not a lot of movement right now. Jab, jab. Not getting a lot with that jab, though. He's trying to position himself to let go with the right hand. Nothing there yet. You know, I love to see uh, fighters like this matched up early in their career because it not only forces them to fight well, Colonel, but it forces them to think in there. They're really, and you take a look at their faces, they're really trying to figure out what they can do to outfox their opponent. Yeah, if you... Uh, fellas that fight in hockey fights or maybe street fights this is totally different these guys really these guys are accomplished fighters boxers and, and as rich said they're, they're trying to figure each other out it's not just uh, you know let it fly punches from outside and trying to take somebody's teeth out this is this is a tough boxing match for both guys because they're both at about the same skill level and they they both came to fight I think Whitaker's a little bit more busy, even though uh, Lily keeps coming forward. They both look as though they have a good uh, foundation, good, well schooled. Look as though they have uh, good futures and could turn into main event fighters. Fighters. Remember, Whitaker is 30 years of age, but Halili is just 24. The undefeated guy with the eight KOs. He's run into a very, very tough guy here. There's the left hand, right hand combination by Hillily showing some hand speed and a little bit of power, snapping that head back. Got kind of a wry smile out of Whitaker as if to say, okay, yeah, you got me. movement there three's in the books rich i'm hard pressed in this one man this is a tough fight to score well you could have wildly divergent scores at the end of this one well that's what happens when you have a a, a fight where guys are uh, uh you know one way or the other and they all seem to go the same way look at this that was the best uh, that was the best combination of the fight <laughs> And acknowledged by Whitaker. And a good, that's the counter right we referred to that Whitaker threw during the course of the round. Nicely done. 
<laughs> that's what that fight, brother. That has been interesting to say the least. Very, very close for the first half of the fight. Then I thought Whitaker landed heavier and more definitive blows in uh, five, six, and seven. There's a right hand. And another one. Wow. He's definitely got Whitaker's attention in the crowds, too. So if he was saving it, he's unleashed it twice in this round. Well, he's got to unleash it a lot more. As Whitaker, right hand, then left hook. Right hand again, another right hand, and another right hand. Three right hands in a row. They're both juiced up now. And Whitaker's going, hey, let's fight. That's five right hands that Whitaker's landed. And, and those are the right hands that Halili needs to be throwing. There's a clear increase in confidence, it seemed like, from Benjamin Whitaker with each succeeding round. He's landing jabs. He's got Halili reaching with his right hand. Not landing any real heavy right hands in the fight. He's landed a couple of decent left hands. Decent jabs and left hooks. It's amazing when, they, when the pace picked up, the crowd really got into it. 